Hi guys, okay, this is part two of the Beer Budget Camper Series. Now, let's address some things that have popped up. One, I had stated about utilizing one of these cheap aluminum camper shells. Could you use fiberglass? Absolutely. If you can find a a, a a camper top of some form, don't be afraid to get the fiberglass, but inspect it. Fiberglass has advantages and disadvantages like anything else. Advantage, they're normally a lot tougher than the aluminum type. Disadvantage, if they start cracking, they just keep cracking. Uh, the vibration and the flexing of the um, truck as it goes down the road, if you start drilling holes in it to mount things to it, it normally starts cracking and after a while it leaks. No matter what you do, it just seems to keep leaking. And that's the one complaint I've had with people over the years uh, that they've told me about that they bought a fiberglass camper, everything was great, and then they decide they want to drill a hole in it to put a gun rack or put a roof rack on it or whatever. And then starts the leaking issues. And after a while they get mad, they take it off and get another camper shell. And then you come by and they say, oh, I'll take $100 for that camper shell. That's why it's so cheap. So be, you know, we're on a beer budget, guys. I mean, just let's just be real world. You can't afford to keep redoing it. So let's do it right the first time. Let's look and see. Can it be repaired easily? And the aluminum ones can be repaired very easily. The fiberglasses with somebody that knows what they're doing can be repaired. But if you find a fiberglass that's got a lot of holes drilled in it and things have been bolted on and everything else, look at it with a weary eye and don't pay a lot of money for it. And then once you get it, if it's good, you're great. If it's leaking, see what you can do to find somebody that works with fiberglass a lot. Body shops, stuff like that. And see if you can give somebody a couple of six pack of beer to seal up some holes to stop it from leaking. Okay? That's my advice. Now, now that we've addressed that, let's go on to the rest of part two. You have now found your truck. That's great. You've decided to go with model whatever. You found out that this is a good engine. It's mechanically good, or you have fixed it or upgraded it to now you feel confident with it. You have addressed all the issues of can I get a replacement fender, can I whatever. All that's good. So you got a rock solid platform to build on. You have now found some sort of camper shell to go on to it. Be it fiberglass, wood, aluminum, some other material that I'm not aware of right now, whatever. As long as you feel this, this could work, okay. Just always be wary. Now, let's look at how we're gonna do this. The best piece of advice I can give you is we have to set up a clear vision of what the goal is for this camper shell. Now let me re repeat that. A clear vision of what abilities and attributes I want this to give me. Okay? Don't be like a kid in a candy store and everything that looks good you want to get. Sit down with a piece of paper and write out what we want. Obviously, we want to be able to sleep. So, let me give you my list of what I want my redneck camper to provide for me. One, I want a place I can enclose and sleep in, okay, which would be in the back. Two, I want the ability to carry table and chairs for me and maybe one other person. I want to be able to carry coolers and boxes to carry food, amenities, and things like that. I want some sort of awning or cover or whatever for rain and for shade. Shade's a big thing in my part of the south. So that's a big thing. Some sort of shade or rain cover that can be set up and the truck can be moved separately. I don't want it bolted to my truck. See, I prefer it something I can just set up and put my truck at because if it's bolted to my truck, I have to take the time to take it down. And if I'm in a, a crisis situation where I gotta go right now, I wanna be able to sacrifice it and leave it, okay? 
So that's the reason. I don't want to have to do a lengthy tear down in order to move. So anything I'm going to put with this vehicle has to be either A, sacrificable, or B, be very quickly taken down so I can get going in case of an emergency situation. Okay? So, now, my bed is long enough for a cot to fit in. I've already got a cot, and when we go into the outfitting here pretty soon, we're going to show that. So my bed is more than big enough. My plan is for this. My cot will go from about here to here. About a little over half of the bed to the wheel well, to the wall. That's where my cot's going to be. That's going to give me about a little over a third right here of storage space. Remember that wooden table that I made several episodes back? That table lay up there face down. My stuff is stacked on it and I slide it out like a drawer so I can get all my stuff off. But we'll show you that a little later on. So I've got that figured out. That means that right here on the side between my bed and the wall there's going to be a space about that big with that wheel well. That's a cubby hole. On the other side is another cubby hole. Cubby holes are small areas that give you an opportunity for some sort of, of setup, storage, or etc. Okay? Now, my bed is fairly low, easy to get in and out. Is your truck low enough that you can get in and out easily? Or would you need, would it be very convenient to have some sort of step that could hook to this to make it get in and out easier? You'll have to make that determination. I've seen a step that would hook to the uh, tow bar box, you know, where you put your tongue into, have a step that gets you up or down, or some other amenity. That's something to consider. I have storage already on top of mine. Does yours need storage? And what am I storing? Okay, we're gonna get to that in just a second. My windows are opaque just from age, and so I only have the front, the back window, and the small side window. Maybe I'm gonna be in a public area, like a campground, and I'm gonna need some privacy. So I'm gonna need something I can cover the windows so I can change clothes or whatever in there. Okay, if I'm surrounded by kids at a campground, so to speak, and I can't just step over to the side and change clothes, I want something to do with that. And we will talk about that a little bit later, how I can use the front of the truck, the, the seat, by putting a tarp between the cab and the door and sitting down in the seat and changing clothes. Now, we can't see anything and putting a tarp to block the view I'll be fine to change clothes in a public campground, okay? Now, I want, that is my thing for the back, being able to sleep, being able to carry food, being able to carry amenities like chairs, tables, and etc. Lights. I have battery-powered lanterns with extremely long run times. So those are going to be my primary lighting for this. Against the, the wall will be a small box. This box will be what I call the bookshelf. And the bookshelf is where I'm going to be carrying any reading materials or other things like that that I want to have to work on while I'm at camp or at night while I'm laying in bed. I want those that like to read at night before I go to bed. So the box that will be sitting there will act like a side table, excuse me, to my bed. I'll have a lantern on it so I can lay there in bed and read. I will also have my little book where I can prop up against the front wall like I'd be sitting in bed and have a small lap desk that I can write or whatever as I'm working out business or whatever. I want that ability. Well, that will ride up there in that front cubby hole and also to the left where the box is going to be. Now, let's talk about that spare tire. You want a full-size spare tire. I do not recommend, if you're going to go in the backcountry, running along one of them donuts. Donuts are great for on the road, but they're not worth a flip on ruddy dirt roads because they're smaller, they're not as durable, and if you've already got in here and got a, into a problem and you've lost a tire because of it, that donut ain't gonna last but that long. And so I recommend another full-size tire. But where are you gonna put it is the question. Now, does your truck have a place to put it already? Okay, as you know, these trucks came with a storage place underneath the back end for a spare tire, and that's where it officially is supposed to go. There's a chain that comes down with a toggle that goes through the center hole, 
you run this long bar through a slit up here in the frame and go up there and you put a handle on it and you screw it and the tire comes down and you get the tire off. It sucks. I'm going to tell you why. We're going to probably be off-road with this, or at least on unimproved roads, right? This truck of mine doesn't have much ground clearance to begin with. As you can see right here, it's only got probably two foot or less of ground clearance. Whenever that tire's flat over there, how much clearance I got on this? Uh-huh. If you go to put leave the tire under there and you get in a situation where I got to change a tire, I now have to basically take my shovel, and we'll get to that carrying a gear later, and I have to dig out to put a jack to jack the truck up. Now I have to unscrew that tire because I can't get it out of there because it's too low. The ground isn't level here. It's always a high center on dirt roads and low pits. For even if I think about it and I get up there, I've got a problem, see? So now I got to jack the truck up, put it on a jack, unscrew and drop that tire, and climb under a truck sitting on a jack on a road to wrestle a tire out of a chain and get it out from under there. Does this sound like an episode of what went wrong and what happened to Blackie? Uh-huh. I'm not going to store a tire under there because there's too big a chance of me getting a mechanical injury or getting pinned alive or dead up under a truck on a dirt road somewhere. So I'm not going to carry a spare tire there. In fact, that area I'm not going to use for anything because it's exposed to all the weather, all the mud, and everything else. And it's just not a good place to carry anything. So I'm going to put my spare tire someplace else. So, that's where my spare tire rides right there. I have created a frame for it where it's an anchor point and I use my Bushcraft zip ties to anchor the... Um, tire to the side wall where it's sitting against the front wall and sitting on the wheel well and held in place right there. Usually in the center of it, you see that gear right there I've got? The jack, the spare stuff goes in the center of it or underneath it. Out of sight, out of mind. Yes, I do sacrifice just a little bit of carrying capacity, but what did I gain by that? One, safer. I ain't got to crawl up underneath. And two, now that I've got it in where I can see it, there's other advantages to that tire. Um, since I'm only carrying it anyway, can I use it as a base for something, an anchor for something, or whatever? And that will be at, at a place and time moment, okay? I have taken that spare tire out before and used it to anchor down a tarp because there was nothing I could anchor to there. And I didn't have a stake I could put in the ground. Ground was rock hard. I've taken that and rolled it out there and used it as my dead man to hold it. I've used it as a base to stand on to get me a little higher for things. I've used it for many other things. It has many uses besides just being a spare tire. But you gotta think outside the box and think, what can I do with this? I had a friend of mine years ago that he used his for the base of a uh, platform to put his stove and all on. He had a piece that would drop in with the uh, wing nuts into the lug nut hole so when he stood it up it was a platform high enough for him to put his, his Coleman stove on and he had a movable Coleman stove he just tip it over and roll it to where he wanted and stand it up so it was utilized as that in camp pretty simple huh but the point is you need a clear vision of where we're going what are my needs I've discussed how I want to sleep and etc but what if I'm not necessarily alone what can I do besides that? Well, there's this. Okay, my old truck, the front seats lay down dang near flat. Add a little padding right here at your lumbar back, and you can lay down and sleep in this thing on your back. So if I've got a second person, like I'm taking a kid, you know, a grandkid or something with me, they can sleep up here. Or I can sleep up here and let the lady sleep in the back if I'm taking my wife or whatever. It opens up the possibility. Plus, as you can see, this is a king cab. I got plenty of storage back behind, and so it's very easy for me to carry extra stuff up here. I've got a back wall right here that I can hang things on, like a gun rack and stuff like that if I'm going hunting, and keep it close to me and out of the back. But I've got multiple areas that I can put gear in and utilize it within the truck. And that's the thing, modularize your system. So, 
I want to be able to sleep in the back. I want to be able to carry enough gear for at least a week. Okay? And that's my planing and camping ability, but I want to be comfortable. That means I'm going to be carrying me some little light hammock, you know me, to be able to sling up and take a nap right quick. I want a comfortable chair. I want a comfortable table to eat and cook off of. I want to be able to carry a cooler big enough to provide me whatever I want or to keep the harvested deer meat or other game cool to bring home with me or fish. Okay. I want the ability to carry a fishing rod and reel on a rack, carry guns on a rack of some kind, out of sight, out of mind. I want a place to be able to carry my Coleman stove, my reading stuff, like talk about my little office, my little bookshelf that I'm going to carry with me. I want the ability to take a shower, and I've already touched on that, it's going to be coming off the side, we'll get to that later. I want to be able to carry at least five gallons of water. I want to be able to carry a toilet, because suppose I'm going to be in some place where I just need to be responsible and not, you know, pollute the environment. I need to have a toilet with me. I need to be able to utilize that and be able to bring it out. How about I need light? Well, I've got a power unit. And with that power unit, I can power anything you'd plug into a wall for within reason. How about other lights? Coleman light, I've got battery powered lanterns, I've got the lights of the vehicle, and I've got flashlights and headlights. I'm covered in the light department. So what my needs, what my vision has to be is what does this vehicle give me, okay? Take your basic camping gear and see how this is going to apply to the truck. You're going to need a bed of some kind. How about I build a platform in the back? And you see a lot of guys doing this. I put me a piece of three-quarter inch plywood all the way across the top of the wheel wells back here and I make two slide-out drawers. Perfectly viable. And that's easy to do, actually. Those rollers and stuff, you can easily get at any place that sells repair stuff or furniture. It's not that difficult. And you could easily make yourself some long slide in and out drawers if you want for that. And that is a way to do it. Just make the bed across the top of the whole thing. But in this particular truck, notice I'm kind of limited in height. I can sit up on my cot in there, but I'm only gonna have a, like an inch or two left. Now, if I was in a different vehicle, like a full size vehicle that's got the higher top in it, yeah. What is your vehicle? How much usable room do I have? Start with a truck, start with a camper shell, then gather your camping equipment you already have and say, how can I carry this in this vehicle and be able to deploy it in and out without a big headache? Just putting it in the back makes for a long day. Experience talking. I don't want to have to dig everything out of the truck to get the first aid kit because I got a boo-boo. I don't want to have to dig everything out of the truck just because my wife wants to know where her nail clippers are or something, you know. I want it modularized so that when I pull pieces out and set them up, there's an order and a rhythm to it. It's kind of like being identifying the puzzle, like being in your own bedroom, and that's how you should think of it. How have I set up my bedroom? My bed is here, here's my nightstand, this is on here, my medicines are right here, my glasses go here, my such and such, such and such, my slippers go here organize it that way have a clear vision because if you don't you run into the problem of well this looks good and that looks good and this looks good and after a while you got so much junk you can't enjoy it because there's too much in the way or i can't carry what i really need to carry because all this other stuff's in the way it needs to be modular so i told you about my slide out table it's going to lay up there flat and my Bed liner is a hard plastic bed liner, kind of slick. So when I slide that bed in all the way up, excuse me, that table in upside down, so the flat top slides in and out like it's on rollers. And then I have, everything's on boxes. So if I'm fishing, it'll be my tackle boxes, my cook boxes, my food boxes, called my chuck box. And then there'll be my um, ice chest and the cook box that's got the pots, pans, etc. I can just slide it out and start setting up camp until everything's off the table, then I set the table up. I've got my awning up, so my truck's underneath it. 
Now the entire left hand side of my bed is empty. And that's for me to go in and out and get onto my bed. See, I can close the doors in inclement weather. I can put all the gear back in there in inclement weather and still just come over the top and climb up on my bed and shut the door. And so me and my gear can be in here in very difficult weather. And that's something you also need to look at. Is it gonna be where I can't get into it with all the gear? Or am I gonna to have to sacrifice something and leave it out in the rain and the wet and the storm because it can't fit, okay? Now notice how I pointed out I got room behind my seats. That would be utilized. How about I could I transfer something out of the back to the front? Like, here's a little tidbit, something I found that works well for me. Once I get to camp, once I get set up, my clothing, my extra clothing that I'm bringing comes to the passenger seat. And it's going to be in a rucksack in that seat. If I'm going to change clothes, I'm going to come to that seat and change clothes unless I'm in a situation where I have to go in the back and lock it up for modesty, you know, for people around. Otherwise, if I'm going to change clothes, that's the closet up front. Immediately behind the passenger seat goes something else, something I don't need that often, but I want easy accessibility to it. When I come down this side of the truck, that's where my five gallons of water is going to be hanging for easy access. At the tailgate, on that side, that's where my cooking station is, and that's where my stove is and everything, because remember, my water's just right there around the corner. So I can just step around the side and fill up a pot and come back. But I put it on the side so that if the water drips, or as I'm rinsing stuff, that water doesn't right here in my area. I'm not putting water in my area. It's over there running away from the truck. Then you swing around to the far side of the truck over here, and that's where, remember I told you I'm going to come off the side poles? That's where I'm going to have a tarped off area that will be up there freestanding and that will not freestand, be hooked to the truck, but easily removed in a heartbeat. And it'll be hooked up to the truck and it'll be a, a tarp blocking it. And that's where I'll have my toilet and my shower right there so that I can come and go as I want. It'll freestand. It's ready to go. And when I go to pack up, I'll start on this side and I'll go down that, taking and packing. And when I come to this side, the last thing I do is grab my clothes out of the front seat, put them on top of the cot in the back, close the door, and I'm done. It'd be a pattern, see? That's how you work. A clear vision of what you want for this truck. I don't want you to waste your money or your time. And so, take your piece of paper, write down what I want this vehicle to provide me a place to sleep. I want, do I want a chair? Do I want a table? Do I want a Coleman stove, a propane stove, a barbecue? I'm going to rely strictly on campfires or some small backpacking camping uh, uh, stove. That's perfectly fine. Take your equipment and work with it. Um, clothing, bedding, etc. You'll add them in as the weather changes. But you need a focus thing. Now boxes, how am I going to carry my boxes? I need a container that carries all the cook pots and pans. So that if it gets nasty and dirty, it's going back in that. And it's not getting all over my gear, right? My lanterns go into a, a box. My chuck box, which is all my dry foods and stuff, goes into this box. And all that needs to stack together and somehow be bungeed together or something where I can slide it in and out easily with no muss or fuss. That's the vision. When you dial this in, man, it just flows. I learned this from watching um, a lot of good wood masters. I mean, real master woodsmen. Uh, my good friend Francis McGowan, old grouch, he would back up his truck. He would drop the tailgate. He would lift up the lid. And in 10 minutes flat, guys, his entire camp would be set up. And he'd be sitting there in his little short chair he'd found somewhere that's really a beach chair of some kind. He'd be sitting on his tailgate with his feet propped up, smoking his pipe. The world was beautiful. And all of us were still struggling to unpack. You know, where's this, where's that? Where did the tent stakes go? I don't know, have you got the rope? Who's got the hammer? And all of his stuff just flowed like water flowing by. That's where I learned the clear vision. And once you learn how to set this vehicle up with a clear vision, it'll be enjoyable to go out and camp, fish, hunt, and come back to it. 
You won't have to ask. You'll know where every part goes. Sit down. Draw it out. Put the bed here. I'll put this here. Put this here. On this side of the bed, I want to put this. Where's the spare tire going to go? Where's the jumper cable's going to go? Where's the jack going to go? And work it out before you start. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Hope this helps you. I really, really do. There's more of these videos coming up, and we're going to get more and more in depth very quickly. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.